to the Extraordinary Acts for Others podcast, brought to you by the Extraordinary Friends here at Freedom's Ring. We are excited to celebrate the extraordinary goodness being done right here in our extraordinary country by some truly extraordinary people. It is our sincere hope that we will excite your spirit, and after listening to today's podcast, you will excitedly go out and do your own extraordinary acts for others in your community. Are you ready? Let's get excited. Hi, friends, and welcome to the Extraordinary Acts for Others podcast. I am Sarah Hunnell, the host, and this week we have Jessica Rambo, a Marine Corps veteran and founder of Painted Buffalo. She is currently an art student who has been using art as a way to connect with and help veterans in North Carolina. And what's really cool is she is currently remodeling a school bus to take her work on the road to reach even more veterans in more places. But before we get to that conversation, we have the three things to know about Freedom Our first thing is we're down to our last two episodes before we break for summer. Don't worry, the podcast will resume on September 2nd. Second, we, while we're on break, we will focus on developing our Quantico, Virginia chapter. So if you know anyone in the Northern Virginia area who is looking for community and friends with a heart of service, please invite them to join us. We'll be having many service project events starting in mid-June. Many of them will be kid-friendly, some of them designed especially for kids, and others will be adult-only service opportunities. So we're really trying to offer opportunities for everyone with the goal of connecting military families with our often temporary duty stations to make them feel a little bit more like home. So the easiest way to do that is to dive deeper in getting involved and meeting more people in the community and out and about in town. So that's really our focus here. The third thing is we're also putting our finishing touches on the Earn Your Strike program that we've been developing. So they will launch with the new season in September. This program is focused on personal and professional development by using volunteerism as a way to execute on these development strategies. We've partnered with some pretty high-profile personal development uh, professionals, and they have helped us create some of this programming and use many of their programs in our programming. So a lot of things that you can earn with each strike that you do earn through your volunteer work. So again, we invite you to go to freedomsringusa.org, where you can enter the ring, become a friend and join our family it's always free there's no obligation but we just know that the more you get involved with your community the more it will start to feel like home and we just want to be a part of that and helping you uh, making your communities feel more like home in each transition make it easier for you and your family with that here's our conversation with jessica rambo who is doing extraordinary work right now in north carolina by using art to connect with and serve veterans So Jessica, why don't you tell us about yourself and what led you to start Painted Buffalo Traveling Studio? So I'm Jessica Rambo. I'm a mom of an 11-year-old and an 8-year-old, and I spent 10 years in the Marine Corps. I was medically separated after 10 years. I got in a pretty bad car accident and uh, had some traumatic experiences during my time, Um, but with the help of of, you know, the community that I ended up in, in Greensboro, North Carolina, and um, my service dog, Bella, and art, it really pulled me out of the the crazy mess that I had ended up in during my So what about, what in your life happened that you decided that you wanted to go forward and start a nonprofit, Painted Buffalo? Right. After um, I got out of the Marine Corps, I started art school here in Greensboro as a BFA major. I originally went into art education, K through 12, but quickly realized uh, I like my kids. I'm not so fond of other people's parenting styles and their child. And so I changed my major to sculpture with a concentration in community-based art. And that's really how Painted Buffalo Traveling Studio started Um, with, you know, my mental health and all of that kind of stuff. I I hunkered school bus and started building and then started teaching classes in the community. Um, At 
special uh, veteran only, you know, facilities. The Servants Center is here in Greensboro and it's a homeless shelter for veterans specifically. So a couple times a month I go in there and teach classes. And I wanted a, a space where I could bring veterans onto the school bus and make art, bring families together and that kind of stuff. And that's how the Painted Buffalo started. So there's several things there that we kind of want to break down, but you emphasize how art helped you with your mental health and well-being. And we had just done a podcast where we had a mother and a sibling of a Navy veteran who had committed suicide on and telling a telling their story about mental issues and how to combat that. And you talk about how art had helped you. Had art always been something in your life that's been good for you or is this a newfound no I mean I I can earliest memories of me you know drawing and painting and you know just being crafty my my mom is also uh in the military and she's very uh artistic and and uh physical and she was a manic so she, she kind of just was you know a mentor growing up not you know emphasizing on the gender but just you're a human being and you can do whatever your mind gets put to and so I've always had art in my life uh in the Marine Corps I was a combat cameraman which they do photo video and graphic design uh in the Marine Corps so it's a very small group and so I just did art throughout my entire career but that was more focused on telling the military story, the Marine story, and not actually telling my story. And so when I got out, I had to find out who I was and you know what my place was in the world, you know, without this attachment to the military, because for 10 years it consumed my entire life. And so that was my way of kind of not wanting to talk about it, not going through therapy. I did I did you know, pretty much everything they tell you not to do. I, I got addicted to opiates and pain medication because I was severely injured in a car accident. I drank a lot. I did, you know, everything that they told you not to do. And art was the one thing that really got me out of my funk. And so now you are going to different veteran spaces to offer this program. Are you seeing that similar translation where other veterans are picking up art as a positive influence in their life? Absolutely. I've After starting Painted Buffalo Traveling Studio, I really connected with other veteran artists around my community and all over the world, really. Um, there's not really a lot of us or a, a big light on us. And so I'm really about telling uh, people that, you know, we're out there. Uh, for the veterans that I've taught classes to, most of the time um, it's predetermined by, you know, the the group that they're at. They say, okay, we're going to have art and Jessica Rambo is going to come teach a class. And most of the time you get, you know, some pretty disgruntled veterans. You know, my guys at the Servant Center are, you know, old Vietnam veterans that, you know, are there after being homeless for years and years and years. And and they thought I was going to come in and start painting flowers and ask them to tell me about their feelings and all that kind of stuff. And, and I have a different approach, one, because I'm a veteran, and two, because I've been exactly where they are, you know, just down on your luck and miserable and depressed and, you know, on all kinds of psychedelic medications. And I come in there, you know, speaking their language and talking to them about you know, medications and their family and, you know, everything but, you know, the real issues while they're there. And naturally, those conversations just start to happen. And now they get excited when I show up and ask their, you know, counselors, when is she coming back? And I get phone calls, okay, can you come this week or this week? You know, now I'm, I'm sought instead of just forcing and bribing veterans to come to my classes. Veterans helping veterans seems to be really important to both the person receiving help and the veteran offering service. Continued service after the military seems to be a big theme through many of the post 9-11 nonprofits. And you talked about being able to speak the language of the veterans that you're serving. 
How important right. is that? It's it's really important. So at the year of my service, I was stationed at the Pentagon. I was in the basement in the operations center. I was, you know, injured. I had gone through quite a few surgeries. I was, you know, not a, a good person or a good mother or a good Marine. I just wanted to get out of there and just be, you know, miserable. And I was sent to a inpatient treatment facility for a little while. And in there, uh, you know, like most veterans, the counselors and the therapists and, you know, the nurses, none of them, you know, had served in the military, you know, props to them as caretakers of veterans, but they really didn't, you know, know how to talk to us or, you know, we'd come up with all of these crazy stories that we went through and, and, you know, you could just see the disgust or the dismay on their faces when we talked to them about the things we went through and they couldn't really understand the things that we went through because they had never gone through those things the exact same way that we had. So with Painted Buffalo Studio and getting veterans, you know, helping other veterans, I'm there telling my story very open and candid about things that happened to me. And hopefully that'll give an outlet or a, a bridge for another veteran to be able to open up and tell their story and heal whether that's verbally, you know, through writing it down or just talking to a friend or through artwork. And, you know, sometimes, you know, like me, I just don't have the words to really express how I'm feeling. And, you know, I make a painting or a sculpture or just come in my bus and wail away at, you know, some hard metal and get, you know, some manual labor out. And a lot can happen, you know, uh, in those moments. So that becomes the essence of the nonprofit is being an outlet to right. tell the story, to be able to express yourself. Yes, exactly. And it's not making, you know, um, I have one professor that says, you know, quality, no, you know, excitement. Yes. You know, you don't have to make the best artwork. You don't have to, you know, be the best painter or drawer or sculptor or anything in this program. You just have to show up. And you just have to be true to yourself. And, you know, some veterans in my classes are like, man, I'm having a really hard day. I just, I can't do that. And that's okay. You know, you don't have to come and you don't have to express yourself. And I have those days also. And it's, you know, really helpful for me as a veteran. And, you know, this is kind of therapeutic for me, being able to give back and serve my veterans, you know, without being active duty anymore. And same as those veterans, you know, we kind of lean on each other and tell each other stories and kind of just, you don't even have to talk about it. You're just there for each other. So as I was looking through your social media, there is right. a recent post about your bus renovation. You had just bought in this yeah. bus, ripped everything out yeah. and ha are making it new to have you and your kids be in there so you guys can travel with the studio has a kitchen yes. has place to do art. <laughs> it's quite amazing. What's, yeah. what's the plans for traveling to be around North Carolina to go cross country school. I'm getting my BFA. I have one year left and I'm planning on going through the master's program. We'll see if, uh, if I make it that far, just decide that my BFA is good and, you know, I'm making headway in this program that I've started. Um, but right now it's here in Greensboro, North Carolina. And, uh, you know, in between school schedules, I have two kids and I'm in school. So we have three different schedules. You know, I plan on going out and, you know, going out to North Carolina. But for right now, I'm kind of build my nonprofit uh, and kind of working through the kinks here in North Carolina. What other kind of programs you mentioned working with the servant yeah. center, <laughs> what other programs do you guys do? So far we've done um, veteran outreach programs like that. I've gone to a couple fairs with my bus and those are not specifically veteran related. They're just getting art out into the community. So I'll go to fairs or um, festivals and that kind of stuff. And kids can come on the bus. You know, most of them will tell me, you know, 
that's not what my school bus looks like. I'm like, you're right. How about this? What would you think? And, you know, we kind of talk about, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle, and, you know, how things can become other things. And, you know, would you put your couch here? And, you know, just talking to children about, you know, using other things. And that's a big part of it too. Although I'm, you know, specifically out trying to help veterans, veterans have families and they have communities and they have wives and husbands. And, and I really want to bring the family dynamic back together so much for, you know, veterans, you know, whether you're active duty, you're always away from your family, traveling, training, you know, overseas. And then when they come back and they get out, you know, a lot of programs have programs that are specifically only for the veteran. But I, I'm trying to make it a point that this isn't only for the veterans, but for the entire family. And so I'm trying to get, you know, uh, military members and their family, their children, you know, their mom and dad, whoever wants to come, they all are welcome. And we can kind of socialize as my family with their family and kind of, you know, start there. A lot of kids, you know, as veterans, I talk to my own children, you know, they don't realize that moms can do other things than be mom. They don't realize that, you know, we have goals and hobbies and all that kind of stuff. So it's really important for me to teach my children, you know, they have two hands, one for helping themselves and one for helping others. And, and that's really how we run our family here. Well, and that's such an important piece as head of the household and being a mom is modeling and inviting your kids to serve with you. So it's awesome that you have your 11 and eight year old right there beside you for all of right. it. Are they eager to do this? Yeah. Or are they willing participants right. or are they, how are they in this process? <laughs> They're willing uh, to build the bus. Uh, they haven't really jumped on the bandwagon or the bus to really live on it, but um, you know, we're discussing it and talking about it as a family and kind of, you know, putting them in charge of their own voices and learning how to use their voice. And, you know, each of them have a bunk area and they could design it and put whatever paint and wallpaper and storage and, and they'll help, you know, build out the bus. I mean, I posted a video this morning of teaching my son how to use a nail gun, which most adults are pretty, uh, scared of using a nail gun but here's my eight-year-old you know proper safety maneuvers on how to use a gun you know and uh you know he just loves it so making them a part of it and listening to their voice and their concerns and really letting them know that we hear them is really important you had just talked about but you had re-emphasized this on your website about this passionate belief for safe spaces for families to come together to bond. How specifically do you guys do the artwork together as a family? Is it working on one project or is it everybody trying to um, do their own just together? Um, it depends, you know, we do a lot of around the kitchen table, you know, art projects for school, whether, you know, my son wants to build dragons and a Legos or, you know, make origami, you know, jumper frogs or you know my daughter's really into unicorns you know getting her to you know find projects like that she's more into the digital part of art you know making youtube videos and tutorials and dancing around and singing my son's more mechanical so really uh you know just figuring out what they like and making art lessons kind of around them when we're on the bus um, we all pull together and we work towards a common goal and work together and everybody has a safe space to speak their opinion and, you know, say, oh, I like this project, you know, I don't like this project and, you know, I think kids would really like this or, you know, just seeing that their parents are humans just like them and we make mistakes and we don't know how to do everything. A lot of parents, you know, I've found don't really like to let their children know that they're human and they can do everything, but that's not a part of life. And, you know, that's kind of setting up your kids as failure. So they see me in here in my bus struggling to figure out how to make, you know, a piece of furniture or, you know, electrical. That is not my go-to. And I'm in here trying to 
fidgeting around and trying to work through stuff and, you know, just making it a family dynamic. And that's how Painted Buffalo works is when the family comes in here, usually the kid picks out the art lesson and they have to see their parents struggling through whatever, you know, they pick. And it really just starts opening conversations. The parents, their guard goes down, the veteran, their guard goes down and they just, you know, by the end of it are just happier because their kid is happy. And that's, you know, hard when you have all of these mental health issues to really stop and embrace, you know, the small things like making, you know, paper mache butterflies and stuff with your little kids. You talk about everything that's going on in life, like your personal work on yourself. You're going through a Bachelor of Fine Arts. You have an 11 and 8 year old starting this nonprofit. Yeah. But you did such a wonderful job of weaving all these together that these aren't separate lanes in your life, but they all support each other so much. And I often ask people about how they settle with the work-life balance and meaningful work. And you kind of show a good example of how to weave that so that it does become balanced. Yeah, I mean, finding the balance is everybody's ultimate goal. You know, if you want to be a working mom and a mom and a wife that works for you, you have to, you know, not let anything slip. But sometimes that just happens and you you know, have to say, okay, you know, we had a bad day today and tomorrow we're going to start fresh. And, and being able to overcome those obstacles, you know, I had, my kids went through all of those obstacles with me. They have, you know, trauma from, you know, me, you know, you have to be honest with yourself. You know, I caused a lot of issues with my kids that they have bonds really angry and really scary. And now we're kind of trying to fix those bonds and, you know, get back to a happy space. And so now, you know, I can tell on my son's face when I'm getting too loud and getting scary, I'll I'll get down to his level and be like, Hey bro, you know, I'm so sorry. I was yelling. This is how I feel. You tell me how I, how you feel, you know, and kind of reconnecting those, those steps. And, you know, this is a, I'm doing a lot of stuff that helps veterans, but, you know, ultimately I have to take care of my children. And if they're not happy and they're not involved in this program, then they're the the number one thing. And so I can't do this without them. Well, that's great. And I love what you're doing and that it's so much a part of you, Um, that this is something that you found has helped you. And now it's, okay, I'm using the one hand to help myself and the one hand to help others. And you've found that great marriage right there in this project. Is there anything about Painted Buffalo that we haven't discussed that you would like to share? Um, I'm thinking, you know, right now I'm just funding the whole thing by myself because, you know, it's just such a passion for me to, you know, I started it out as, you know, just a thing for me and my kids to do together and kind of bond over this thing. And it's kind of evolved into this bigger and bigger project, you know, in my community I'll, you know, be like, oh, hi, my name's Jessica Rambo. And people are like, oh, are you that girl with the bus? And I say, yes, you know, I am, you know, kind of thing. And I'm starting to get recognized around town. I I don't live in a a major city, but, you know, my town's pretty big. So, you know, funding and all that kind of stuff. I'm in the very beginning stages of a nonprofit and still doing paperwork and IRS and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's just a lot of community has come together and, you know, I just want to get this mission out there and, and, uh, you know, as well known as possible so that I can help as many people as possible. You mentioned at the beginning about your program being community-based art. What does that mean? Community-based art is, you know, a lot of veterans, they really, you know, depending on their service, don't really want anybody to know they're a veteran. Um, I go to UNCG and we have 700 veterans on campus, but most of the professors, you know, don't know that their students are veterans. Um, And so we're really trying to emphasize on bringing the community back. While you're active duty, you know, you have this huge sense of community and, you, you know, I've got your six, you've got mine kind of mentality. And when you're out in the civilian world, you don't really have that tight 
of a community because y you know you're not going through horrific things that military members are going through you know you're just going through life like everybody else and so this is kind of you know bringing art out there knowing there's you know different tools for your toolbox if art doesn't work for you then you know we'll figure out writings for you then we'll find somebody uh that you know, likes to write and they're a veteran and, you know, we'll get them to the right people. So this is a, you know, a community based thing. I've had quite a few artists, you know, hey, when you finish the bus, can I teach a class on there? Yeah, sure. Hey, I've got this studio here. When you're finished with the bus, come make art with me, you know. So it's really bringing together all types of communities and really, you know, this is going to be our home, but really it's, it's the communities space to you know kind of make art and and be able to go wherever we are needed well thank you jessica for being our extraordinary guest today it's, i think it's really amazing what you're doing in your community and allowing art to be the vehicle to serving others to learn more about painted buffalo you can visit paintedbuffalostudio.com So now it's time to share some of our spirited stories of extraordinary acts for others that are happening across our country right now. We celebrate the goodness around us because we know that when we appreciate goodness, we're more likely to act in goodness and spreading goodness around this country can be done a lot more. If you see good news stories, tag at Freedoms Ring USA or use the hashtag extraordinary acts for others. Our first story comes from Michigan where Sophie Killsman gave Doug Harvey a hug. This hug was extraordinary because Mr. Harvey was a soldier in the 84th Infantry Division during World War II, and Mrs. Killsman was a girl in the Sawzweddell camp, which Harvey was there to liberate. Mrs. Killsman was thrilled to be able to have Harvey over to share pictures of the family she started because she was able to survive and immigrate here to the United States. Next, we follow Tyler Carrick, who is on a mission to thank every police officer in America. In two years, Tyler, who is only 11 years old, has delivered over 75,000 donuts to police stations in 41 different states. This all started because he saw four officers in his local grocery store and wanted to buy them a snack. Their overwhelming gratitude spurred him to go on and thank as many officers as he could. Now it's our turn. If we really let these stories of extraordinary acts for others inspire us and motivate us to do our own good, then we should spread it. So when you do service to others or volunteer in your communities, share it with us. You can DM your stories on social media, email podcast at freedomsringusa.org, or our preferred way is to post it using the hashtag extraordinary acts for others so that you too can inspire goodness. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Extraordinary Acts for Others podcast. If you want to do something extraordinary for us, hit the subscribe button, rate us, and leave us a, a review so others can see it, and spread the word on your social media. We really believe that you are extraordinary and have the ability right now to do something extraordinary for other people. So we invite you to join us. Follow at Freedoms Ring USA, or you can sign up for membership at freedomsringusa.org.